The year is 1962 in Chicago, and our main character Jimmy Reardon is a middle-class teenager who just graduated from high school. Jimmy spends his time writing poetry and drinking coffee. The movie starts with Jimmy on a train ride with his father. He had bruises on his face hinting at a fight that he was involved in earlier that day. After graduation, Jimmy finds himself in the No Exit Cafe where he had just finished writing his latest poem. He approached two girls, one has pigtails and the other is wearing a beret. The girls ignore him at first but after a while, he somehow manages to take the girl with the pigtails home and sleeps with her. A few weeks later, the girl calls Jimmy to tell him that she's pregnant. She says that she could either get an abortion or they have to get married. He then gives her $110 out of the money he saved for his college tuition. He discovers not long after that he wasn't the only guy she told the story to and that she was paid the same amount by a few other guys. The girl turned out to be a swindler, but before Jimmy could catch her, she had already skipped town and Jimmy never saw her again. The next evening, Jimmy visits his rich, upper-class best friend, Fred Roberts, and asks to borrow $110 from him to make up for his college fund. He tells Fred that his parents found out about the girl and now they won't help him pay for his college tuition until he pays back the $110 that he took without their permission, that won't even cover your books in today's college. Fred lectures him about being irresponsible. Jimmy describes Fred as having buttoned down mind and buttoned down bank account, in reference to his favorite outfit, a button-down shirt. Jimmy hints that Fred will not let him borrow money, but he already thought of a solution to persuade his friend, a brilliant solution, he calls it. Jimmy knew that Fred had never slept with a girl before, calling the situation chronic virginity. He capitalized on this condition and talked his friend into letting him borrow money. In exchange, he would help Fred find a date that same night. They drove around town, but it was raining hard, and all of the places they thought of going to were closed. The deal was, Jimmy would find Fred a girl by 2 o'clock, and the $110 is his. It is now past 2 o'clock, and they are still driving around. Fred gets frustrated and tells Jimmy that they should go home, but Jimmy manages to convince him into staying longer. They stop at a local diner thinking that it would be filled with college girls, only to find out later that there was no one in there except one girl who was reading a book. Jimmy and Fred approach her introduce themselves and pretend they're college students. They invite her to the no exit bar, telling her that there will be poetry and music. She agrees, and Jimmy asks Fred to pay the bill while he escorts the girl to the car. In the car, the girl asks Jimmy to help her with her hair clip, and they end up kissing. Fred catches them and walks away pissed off, accusing Jimmy of being a bad friend. Jimmy then runs after Fred and convinces him to walk back to the car. He agrees, albeit angrily only to find the girl was already gone. Jimmy tells Fred that she left because Fred hurt her feelings by being angry, gaslighting him. Fred gets even more angry and drives away, leaving Jimmy behind. Jimmy gets drunk and starts throwing beer bottles at a passing train. He's upset about the fact that without his college tuition, he might be stuck in a small suburb forever while his rich friends go off to their chosen Ivy League schools. The morning after, Jimmy wakes up to his mother knocking on his bedroom door. She tells him that whether he likes it or not, he is going to college. She tells him that his father wants him to go to his old college, but Jimmy protests, saying that he doesn't want to go to an all-boys boarding school. His mother tells him that most children would be grateful for his opportunity, but this doesn't change Jimmy's mind. The next day, Fred picks up Jimmy to go driving with their friends, including Fred's girlfriend Denise Hunter, and they arrive at Lisa Bentwright's house, where Jimmy finds her playing tennis. He and Lisa are in a complicated relationship, which is often the source of their arguments. Jimmy thinks that Lisa is embarrassed of him because she's wealthy, and he's not. Lisa argues that she's not, saying that the only reason she can't be alone with Jimmy was because her mother won't allow her to go out. The couple make up and Jimmy tells her that he decided to go to his father's college after all. Lisa then tells Jimmy that she's going to Hawaii, and Jimmy suddenly decides to change all his plans and go with Lisa. Jimmy then focuses on coming up with enough money for a plane ticket to go to Hawaii. He only needed $88 on top of his college tuition. When he gets home, Jimmy tells his father about his plans to go to Hawaii, but his father gets angry. This doesn't stop Jimmy from saving money and starts taking more jobs as a cleaner. Later on, at Denise Hunter's house, she finds Jimmy in her bedroom waiting for her. It turns out that Jimmy and Denise have been sleeping with each other while they're both in different relationships, Denise with Fred and Jimmy with Lisa. After fooling around, 
Jimmy tells Denise that he's leaving for Hawaii. He then asks to borrow $60 from her and she declines, saying that Fred warned her about Jimmy asking her for money, and that she should say no if it ever happens, because there's no guarantee that Jimmy will pay her. At this point, Jimmy had run out of people to borrow money from when he thought about Mrs. Spaulding, his boss mother, an elderly wealthy woman who lives alone with her housemaid. He goes to her house, with only one goal in mind, to get $60, whatever it takes. Mrs. Spaulding has a big party coming up and is eager to invite guests. Jimmy tells her that he knows a lot of people who are coming to her party, but will only tell her if she gives him money in exchange for the information. Unabashed by this, she instead asks him for information about another older woman in town. Jimmy makes something up and she believes him. Mrs. Spaulding's housemaid watches her like a hawk, but she manages to collect $60 out of the places she hid her money behind a frame, inside a doll's skirt, behind the vinyl player, you name it. She then gives the money to Jimmy, completing his savings for Hawaii. Back at home, Jimmy packs his things and writes a letter to his parents telling them that he's leaving for Hawaii. His mom's friend Joyce Fickett visits, and his mom asks him to greet her. Not long after Jimmy's father arrives and is surprised to see Joyce. He calls Jimmy's mom to the kitchen and they argue loudly about Joyce being there. Jimmy's dad clearly doesn't like Joyce. Hearing the argument, Joyce excuses herself, saying that she needed to get home anyway because she's expecting guests for dinner. Jimmy's mom asks him to drive her friend home but Jimmy protests, saying that doing so would make him late for his date with Lisa. Arriving at Joyce's house, she invites Jimmy for a couple of drinks but he declines. As Joyce is walking towards her front door, Jimmy changes his mind and tells her that he's changed his mind about the drinks. Inside Joyce's house, she and Jimmy are sitting in the living room, drinks in hand. Jimmy asks her about her husband and she tells him that they've been divorced for a while. Joyce asks him about how his summer vacation is going and Jimmy tells her that he's leaving for Hawaii. Jimmy is attracted to Joyce and ends up getting more drinks and spending the rest of the afternoon with her talking and drinking. He also recites a few poems for her. Jimmy calls Lisa who's already been waiting for him for more than an hour and Jimmy tells her that heck coming. After his call with Lisa, Jimmy finds Joyce in the library. They start dancing. Eventually, Jimmy kisses her and they start sleeping together. Jimmy leaves after Joyce gets a call from his mom looking for him. Jimmy drives to Lisa's house but she is already gone. Lisa's mother tells him that Lisa found another date, and Jimmy drives to the dance looking for Lisa. Inside the ballroom, a man stops Jimmy but he pretends that he's an heir to a wealthy family who helped organize the ball so the man would leave him alone. Lisa sees him and asks him to leave. He tells her that he won't leave until she lets him explain, but Lisa is angry and runs away from him instead. Jimmy runs after Lisa and they end up in the garden. Lisa won't listen to him and kicks his leg. He pretends to be injured. Lisa gets worried but gets even more angry when she realizes that Jimmy was pretending. Jimmy tackles her on the ground and she struggles against him. He lies to her and tells her that he ran out of gas. That's why he was late. Jimmy tells her that he was hurt that she took another date instead of him but Lisa argues that she waited two whole hours for him. She's upset because she had plans for them that night and now everything is ruined. Lisa leaves Jimmy in the garden. As long as Lisa is gone, two guards approach Jimmy and forcibly escort him out of the party. Jimmy struggles, but as soon as they reach the front door, his friend, Susie Middleburg, another wealthy heiress, is standing on the balcony looking down at them and commands the guards to stop. She runs downstairs and tells them that Jimmy is her fiance and they apologize. As soon as the guards are gone, Susie and Jimmy walk out of the party to find his car. They drive to a fancy restaurant to have dinner. They talk about Lisa's current date, Matthew Hollander, who also writes poetry just like he does. This information makes Jimmy even more jealous and upset. He speeds up the car and goes back to the party. Inside, he sees Matthew on the stage playing the harmonica and reciting poetry at the same time. As soon as Matthew finished his poem, he jumped off the stage and in front of Lisa. Jimmy sees this and walks up the stage himself to recite his own poem. He tells the crowd that he's writing the poem as he's reciting it, and looks at Lisa as he's talking. He starts insulting the entire crowd using the poem, and cusses them in the end. The crowd gasps in surprise, and Lisa walks away with Matthew in tow. Seeing Lisa leaving, Jimmy jumps off the stage and starts running towards her. Watching all of this unfold, Susie is the only one clapping her hand, finding the whole ordeal extremely amusing. As Jimmy steps into the front door, 
He sees Lisa walking inside Matthew's car. Jimmy starts chasing them with his car. After a while, Matthew suddenly stops. He and Jimmy step out of their respective cars, and Matthew tackles Jimmy, not letting him land a single punch. Lisa, who is now crying, calls Jimmy's name, but doesn't do anything to help him either. Matthew and Lisa drive off, leaving Jimmy on the road, bloodied and defeated. Jimmy starts driving home and ends up crashing on a post. He sees a nearby telephone booth and calls Joyce. She's still half asleep when she answers the phone and thinks that it's Jimmy's father. At first Jimmy is confused why Joyce is calling his father by his first name and realizes that it's because Joyce and his father have been having an affair. Surprised and upset, Jimmy puts the phone down and calls his father. His father answers the call screaming and angry but as soon as Jimmy mentions Joyce Fickett, he calms down and asks for Jimmy's location so he can pick Jimmy up. While waiting for his father to arrive, Jimmy starts contemplating his situation. He starts thinking about his own actions, how it mirrors the actions of his father, and how alike they were after all. While they're waiting for the train to arrive, Jimmy tells him that he has decided not to go to Hawaii. Jimmy discovers a new understanding and appreciation for his father. With this, he tells him that he has decided to go to McKinley College, his father's alma mater. From the train window, his father smiles. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.